It's really extraordinary. We've his felt, over the we've past felt three over days, the past his power three just being his power just being slowly sapped. All authority, slowly in, that sapped. All authority in that and building. And it feels to me like and it feels to me like the morning and the letter is morning and the education secretary of the education secretary of the morning. They're the final nails in the coffin. They're the final nails in the coffin. The Deemsa Harvey's letter, as you pointed out, Charlie, to me a few minutes ago, isn't addressed to the prime minister. It's a public he letter. About, he, he, he does say at the end of it, Prime he, he Minister, does say at the end of it, Prime Minister, the right you know in your heart what the right thing to do is. And go now. Is, and but go throughout now, it, he's talking throughout about it, he's making talking it clear to the Prime about Minister, making it clear to the Prime Minister, alongside colleagues, um, alongside colleagues um, by, uh, by uh, alongside my colleagues number 10, alongside my colleagues number 10, this was going. Only one direction this was going. Nadeem Dahabi says he told the Prime Minister yesterday. Nadeem Dahabi told the Prime Minister yesterday. And that he should leave with dignity. The reason I stumbled there is, as this all happens, the blame game starts. As this all happens, the blame game starts. Starting, the blame game from starting from someone who was in government and someone who was in government until a few days, ago, days ago, Nadeem Zahawi was the one Nadeem that Zahawi kept the Prime Minister in power yesterday, but only for 24 hours. But only for 24 hours. It just feels by the most extraordinary situation we're in. There's two things, Charlie. 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 There's 8.59. Let's just pick up the, exactly where we were. So, the, the, we have these messages, we have these resignations. In practical terms, uh, what, what happens here? I mean, what, what happens next? I mean, look, it, that, 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 that is one of the few things that's unclear. It's what Boris Johnson is going to do. Hunches that, given what's just happened with the Chancellor and the Education Secretary both telling the Prime Minister to go, Boris Johnson probably will conclude now that he can't continue. But we can't be certain of that because he's not a normal BBC Prime Minister. The very Most Prime Ministers would have gone News. yesterday. So I don't know what he'll do. Had radio silence from number 10 all morning, which suggests to me they're weighing up their options. This is but BBC News. Go, I'm Geetha Gurumuthi, live at Downing Street. Can Johnson I just clarify a couple of things? Because we've heard different voices from Prime senior Minister, um, despite an avalanche of Some resignations from government the normal course of and party posts in the last 24 hours. In office the new Chancellor, Nadeem Zahawi, has called for the Prime very Minister senior to quit. Voices in the, the new Education Party. Secretary, Michelle Donnellan, has resigned. That would not be the right thing. So, so uh, how does that work? The trust of the, Look, I think that's the public totally right. lost the trust Look, of when most Theresa of the parliamentary she uh, party stayed as Prime Minister, and you know, many of us feel a let down. Same with David Cameron. The facts are undeniable. Uh, the vast majority uh, of Prime Ministers. He can't command the confidence of people, sufficient numbers of people to serve in his government. Tory MPs who are well connected and dominant lab. Nor officials uh, recommend that taking a photo down a woman's top Boris without Johnson her consent, hospital, known as down blousing, should be made Prime Minister. illegal no in England and Wales. Answer. To that question, in the US, that prosecutors was the say the man charged with killing seven yesterday. people at an um, Independence Day parade in out, Chicago the Dominic has still confessed one of the few to the mass loyal shooting. To the Prime Minister in the cabinet. And we've heard nothing from him. Um, so there may be people watching this morning, just join uh, breakfast, who, who are sort of thinking, really, is it, is it the situation that extreme? You came to me just a moment ago and, and said we really have to start thinking about things differently now. It, it's sort of it, the momentum has significantly to changed News, today. What in the here, last at 20 Downing minutes, half an hour. The, the biggest problem Boris Johnson's you, got the press is that it's got here on worse another every hour in since the health secretary Sajid Javid resigned. It got worse yesterday. It got worse again Boris this Johnson morning. As there this isn't at the moment a functioning government because of the number of ministers who walked out and a department. We have learned like education that, that have nobody at ministerial level left in them. I think it's impossible to see at the moment how Boris Johnson can turn this around. Look, uh, has now nobody knows for sure what he's going to do. Maybe he will try down. and cling on over the weekend. Has but it feels to me like the, the rot was set yesterday and it's just got worse and worse and worse. I did it and I really struggle to see at the moment how this lasts more than two or three and what we know from what he said, of course, 
uh, it's precisely uh, th th that he will remain. Will you know, will depending on whose exact quotes vital, you take on board, that he will have to be dragged screaming and kicking out of this place, number 10 Downing Street. The people have fought um, poorly for but there has been no decision. sense at any it point in this pro uh, process Yesterday that I made suggests clear to the Prime Minister, that he will alongside my step outside number 10, and say, that there was only one direction where this is going, and that he should leave with dignity. We're back on here tomorrow morning. the hopes that he would listen to an old friend of 30 years, this morning are I kept so this dramatic private. that I'm heartbroken the that add to the drama of yesterday, the add to this wide expectation around Westminster now that there's nothing no the Prime Minister can do to soldier on him. He will have to either resign today or tomorrow or be forced out by his party next week. And one of the other things that I know you've been watching very closely and your contacts, there are almost no supporting voices to be heard. I mean, as you say, some are clearly supporting him by their side. Uh, the likes of Dominic uh, Raab, who have not uh, spoken against him. But there are no voices supporting him. Well, I mean, that's the problem. There's, there's no one out because this morning because saying that sort of thing. I'm just going to pull up my phone here because I've, I've got another one. Own, uh, ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, has said in the last few in, uh, seconds, oh no, that tweet's been deleted. Someone had sent me a tweet from Ben Wallace that now seems to have gone. Let's see if we can get that back up in a second. Regardless of what Ben Wallace said in that tweet that we can't get now, the mood has changed completely in the past 40 hours. It's got worse and worse and worse, and worse and worse. We have seen, and of course, increasing numbers of people stepping down today and throughout the day. Whatever Boris Johnson is hoping in there has been overtaken hours. by events. Sometimes, and, uh, you're happy to stay for a moment, too. I know so I've got this Ben Wallace to, okay. uh, yep. message back up again. I wonder if you had a typo or something, and that's why I normally do when I, yeah. um, when I have a problem with messages. Two seconds, Charlie, because as I say that, my wife's always... So Ben Wallace, and again, this is a very significant voice, isn't it? Defence Secretary was on in that building yesterday uh, while we were on air on breakfast, he says a number of us uh, have an obligation to keep this country safe no matter who is government. Prime Minister. The party uh, has a mechanism uh, to change leaders and that is the mechanism the which I advise party. colleagues to uh, use. And that is in the why meantime, is so the public would not forgive us if we left uh, these offices of state today. empty. What's he saying? I'm not resigning, the, but Boris uh, Johnson's time's up and party needs to do it. Just one thing, and I know colour sometimes You haven't quit your job, but around 50 people have quit jobs either as ministers or party roles. Which was after we have Boris Johnson's uh, appearance in front of the liaison Techni committee. Technically, yes. And we, we do. They we walk do out have and you uh, and other reporters an executive are close by. Uh, yeah, organ so of the state. Boris um, Johnson technically is quite in, an interesting choice of words. Yes, I mean, for example, myself, I am uh, in, in, in a, a role which is of constitutional and legal significance. The attorney while, has touched the duties as um, his, to his meet, allies were uh, telling me legal downstairs, deadlines. literally 20 metres away from where the Prime Minister was. I am still discharging those duties and those functions in my capacity as a government minister. And that's why I'm not resigning, because my faith, first and foremost, duty to the country, uh, and I want to continue uh, to enable a functioning a of state a as far as I can. Well, you say your duties to the country. Resign. Wasn't your duty to the country um, to call to out his, uh, to Boris Johnson's came back here ever Mama, since he's been holed up in there ago. trying There's to figure out what next? But I think what next is increasingly being Johnson taken out of his hands. His willingness to repeat it. Thank you so much, Nick. We await true. developments. Uh, uh, we're live at Downing Street say this morning. We're just a moment. His Let's take a His willingness to now. sanction Headlines behaviour that was regarded as unacceptable. His willingness to promote people who behave badly simply because they were loyal to him. There's nothing you know. Hello, now, good morning. Wales Office Minister David T. C. Davis has said the Prime Minister the should go and that he's lost support of senior uh, and, cabinet uh, members. Constantly the Monmouth MP said he expects uh, to be Prime sacked for his comments. Mr. Davis uh, said he was at all of the junctures where there Simon has been Hart as Welsh uh, Secretary as questions he about leadership night. and uh, in his resignation uh, his position, letter, Mr. Hart has weighed up uh, the factors and um, up until yesterday, really, it's been the this morning. Faye Jones, the MP for Bracken and Radnorshire. Resigned from way her role in favour of him aid. staying in post. Three other uh, Welsh Tory MPs have also left to this deliver uh, on uh, promises that Chocolate manufacturers that we have made in Wales say they're feeling the impact of the rising cost of living. The, the increasing costs has of led to companies having to increase prices to the as they try to grapple with the growing production expenses. This chocolate business in Pembrokeshire has raised their prices for the first time since opening eight years ago. And during an economic crisis. And live audiences will be back at the Tangoplan International Estate Lodge from today. 
day after two years of online events. Service, the festival is celebrating its 75th anniversary, but this year's edition is shorter and scaled very down, with no parade being held in uh, But I'm putting myself forward, the weather now, Nick, because I believe areas that of the 2019 manifesto the morning, is fit for purpose, is uh, presents a bold and inspiring vision of our country. I want to deliver Celsius, on the promises contained to in that manifesto. I want to embed the uh, opportunities of Brexit and tidy up the outstanding issues relating to the Northern Ireland Protocol. I want to fix the problem of illegal boats crossing the Channel, stop a Strasbourg court from interfering in our domestic policies, cut taxes, shrink the size of the state, the state and government spending, uh, good morning. Uh, and Welcome actually back to take on in a robust uh, fashion we're to pick up some on, of this uh, uh, enormous amount of information and coming out uh, rubbish, to us like this morning. It, a number of resignations uh, you'll be aware our throughout schools, the morning. Our uh, let's speak now society. to Chris Philp, the former technology minister who has resigned. Well, Very good morning uh, to you. Thank you for your time this morning. Mr. Philp, what was uh, your, uh, the final reason that you decided to resign? Well, I think it was very clear that Boris Johnson had so lost the confidence that the game of the public really is and up. of the of course, parliamentary party, and his position was unsustainable. I also felt that it's become increasingly apparent in we are now recent from Chris Mason, uh, weeks our political and recent editor, days that Boris Johnson there are will issues with uh, integrity, so Chris Mason, which our political I found it impossible to um, Boris Johnson overlook is going to any longer, so taking all of those things together. Um, I didn't Street. feel it was right that we he would should carry on as Prime Minister, and therefore, of course, I had to resign can, and of course, as a Minister Mason in the government, which I did. Uh, uh, obviously, I uh, heard that from. Thank uh, you very much. I'm sorry sources. we're going to cut you short. But I just course, want to bring in Nick now because we're getting more information. Uh, really uh, just since bring we us heard, right up to date, uh, Nick. Yeah, just uh, the details of the uh, case. Chris Mason, Mason case our political editor. And the contradictions the in the Prime Minister's story from the senior official will resign in the Foreign today. Office. We've that seen uh, the huge uh, number of internal continue, Conservative the protests hours, we and even this Boris morning Johnson seeing that uh, those that appointed yesterday tried like to still shore up the Prime Minister from the and still got the new Chancellor that they had to go. Now the resignation like of ministers that were put into office just within the last few down. hours. Fears of that that has been enough to tip the Trump balance. Constitutional crisis. And the expectation now, that he didn't have enough ministers to form a government, enough ministers to fill in behind all the people that are okay, clearly so this is based uh, from BBC's of all political wings editor, of the Conservative Chris Mason, Party, both his, those who backed his Brexit information and is those who didn't. That the uh, resignation will happen government, today, because this was the speculation uh, that would it be today, MPs, would it be seen the vote of dragging into next week. Last, uh, but it seems weeks, clear the that the sequence of events this morning with some very, very significant interventions, literally in the last 15 or 20 minutes, has changed things once again. Yeah. Is a question really so of basically, when yeah, and exactly not that. if. The situation uh, but of course, we will wait to see what Downing Street officially say on camera. We are hearing to, now to cling from to power. Mason, BBC's had planned editor, some sort of Boris Johnson uh, is going to resign to as Prime Minister. His, of course, uh, he has delivered Brexit, that track. is going to be his biggest that legacy to this country, whether you support it or not. The argument is going rage. And the question now is, of course, how damaging has this whole saga been to the Thank you very much. Sorry about the mechanics there. I'll get two guests in, if we may, just very briefly. Anna Isaac from the Independent, Sebastian Payne from the Financial Times. In the Conservative uh, I don't know if you just heard what we were saying there. I'm, I'm not sure what information you've heard that, uh, along the same lines. Boris Johnson yes, sir, is going to by two step down, but stay on as caretaker leader into the autumn. That's according to Chris Mason. Big cabinet resignations this morning. And I think we saw a tweet coming out from Ben Wallace, who's been one of the most ardent defenders of Boris Johnson over the past week. And he said he will not quit. He, says he, that he will the stay defense, but in office urged until colleagues that to use the mechanism to remove him. Nick we saw the new Chancellor Nadim Zahawi, who's been the job 48 hours, also yeah, urging the Prime Minister to go. So I think after a very traumatic couple of days in Westminster, they finally realised him that behind that black leader, door, it's up. He is. Pick up on that. I'm being told that the letter's being written as we speak. It's fair to say that as far as the officials inside go, they expect him to see today. That's what I've been told. I think it's become a sort of masterclass and state of masochism the past few days. You know, how many punches will it take? Is he going to fight on the fight to the death? He's been the narrative. Um, and I think um, Zahari and Wallace um, and did make that impossible say, this morning. Some Particularly of his, Ben Wallace uh, using the terms that he did. Like it was a very damning message and saying, you know, been really something must like be done. But we do need continuity in this country. And that really speaks to a sense in the Tory party that their job is to offer stable government. It is to be that continuity, that safety for the country. 
And so it's I think very speaking clear to the party to for the question of the way people are asking in that way this morning, how very powerful can it look? Sebastian, so this is all, I mean, literally, for those people just joining us, this is literally in the last few moments that the time very much is turned. And all those, including yourselves, political correspondents, have been told the decision has been made. He is to resign. Do you know anything about the mechanics of this? These are all questions we're going to have to find out when we hear from the Prime Minister at some point today. Do we because, have any first of all, is he actually going to remain Prime Minister during the interim period when the Conservative Party chooses a new leader? Now, obviously, when Theresa May decided to resign and David Cameron, they stayed in Downing Street until the party got a new leader. We don't know if Boris Johnson will do that. If he does stay in Downing Street, then there's going to need to be some ministerial appointments. We've got no Northern Ireland Secretary, no Education Secretary, no Wealth Secretary, as well as all those 50 other government appointments as well. It could be that if he does walk straight away, there could be an interim Prime Minister, Dominic Raab, who is the Deputy Prime Minister, would be the obvious person, and they could have a temporary government to try and fill those slots. The next thing, of course, is the process for selecting a new Conservative Party leader. The way it normally works is you have a period where MPs whittle down to the final two candidates, and then it goes out to the country for a much bigger vote. I think given the gravity of this situation, of course, the economic crisis, the war in Ukraine, and all the turbulence of the past couple of days, on the show um, I think today, there's a huge pressure on Tory MPs just to decide themselves and not put it out to the country. But of course, if you do that, that means they don't necessarily have a mandate from grassroots activists. So the Tory party in that 1922 committee backbenchers have some really big questions that have to try and answer. Um, but at the moment, it's a fast-moving picture. It is. And I, I mean, I'm very mindful there will be people coming to their TV screens this morning who didn't know quite where we're at. And it's changed in the last 10 minutes or so that we understand at this point that Michelle Boris Donald's Johnson, the Prime Minister, is for just to over a day resign. resign. As you say, we don't know the mechanics of the how that up. will happen. No but it is there was a functioning so government. quick. He's been forced out. Literally in the last few minutes, but between the time that we last heard Nick, from I mean, Boris, in terms Johnson, of Boris Johnson, 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 when he was in front of in the Commons, to, to the liaison committee, today, still with that bullish, I will remain. And in now we are in a very different place. Circles. Yeah, absolutely. So With what all we've the gone deep in the last few hours from is this. an emphasis on the he mandate from the electorate office. that Boris Johnson also had. He was saying, I won this huge election victory. That's a huge number of people voting for me to govern. I've been given a job to do. The country faces multiple crises at home with the cost of living, the geopolitical situation with Russia. And he was saying, you know, I've got to stay and do the job. What's happened now is we've reached a point where doing that job has been called into question. It so does absolutely, leave it's not sustainable for him to continue. The We've had this steady, steady hemorrhaging of staff at all levels in terms of to people serving as uh, eyes and ears for the various ministers, the but now to the ministers themselves saying the someone needs to be continuity for this country right now. But bear in mind, if I had any other option other than to leave an incredibly important role, I would be resigning. And Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, was incredibly popular in the party because he's seen as a very safe pair of hands. You know, the exact epitome of your perfect Tory, as it were. There's a lot him to be saying, I have to stay in office, but it's Johnson your job to get him out. That's just dealt a killer blow. It's just picked up on that, because we have a daughter number 10 behind us there. People will remember very vividly that resignation moments in the past in a podium out here. Do you think that the public will accept him, even staying on until then? We just don't know, do we? We don't know. Well, I imagine Boris Johnson will do a statement. You'd imagine that podium will come out behind. Unpredictable. Well, I imagine Boris Johnson will do a statement. You'd imagine that podium will come out behind. Unpredictable. Well, I imagine that podium will come out behind. Unpredictable. Well, I imagine that podium will come out behind. Unpredictable. Well, I imagine that podium will come out behind. Unpredictable. Well, I imagine that podium will come out behind. Unpredictable. Well, I imagine that podium will come out behind. Unpredictable. Getting breaks are done, defeating Jeremy Corbyn, the war in Ukraine, and the and vaccine the rollout. And he will essentially say what I think has been very clear for the past couple of um, days that he's lost Look, the confidence the of his party, of his colleagues, and of his cabinet, and it's time for him to go and move on. But um, as I said, you know, it's been a pretty unedifying 48 hours, I think, for British politics and the Conservative Party. It was clear yesterday morning that he did not have the confidence of the party anymore. And I think the thing that killer blow when we look back on this will be the sad of Michael Gove very late last night, a very popular cabinet minister within the Conservative Party, the man who was meant to be doing the levelling up agenda, the raison d'etre of Boris Johnson's government, and the fact that he was abruptly sacked and described as a disloyal snake by people in Downing Street. I think that's when he said, that's it, we've had enough. Sebastian, thank you both very much for your watch with interest. Thank you for your insight this morning. If you're just joining us and you've been following events this morning, very important information to bring to you. The BBC now understands that Boris Johnson um, 
will resign as a, as a later um, today. We know, of course, John McGuire is on Collins Green this running, morning. Just, uh, just uh, John, tell us about um, any reaction you're hearing. Hearing. Very early days, of course. Over. People are He's just hearing that news. Uh, we it, we it, it's that, but shocked but not surprised that it's one of those situations, really. Just talking to a couple of people as they're drifting around. We are going to be talking to Steve Baker, MP, in a few minutes' time, by the way. So we'll get his reaction first. One of the main drivers of the Brexit campaign, of course, a hill. It'll be very interesting to hear from so and find we had many expected sort of things, to be I don't know, maybe we Not expected them yesterday, but the people we've been talking to this morning, stand. to Matt Hancock, Some other names to Tim Lawton, when well, they haven't been the talking to you and I, Charlie, Hunt, they've been absolutely the glued to their phone, not Tom only Chicken because Hunt, of all of those other resignations chair, from other ministers, not only from the cabinet, but other junior ministers as well, have been coming through thick and fast, but you think of a situation like Michelle Donnellan really only in a post for, what, 24 hours, 48 hours, something like that, a revolving door. He plans to stay a ministerial the appointment, so uh, a sense really of a fast-moving situation. Now, uh, you mentioned over. Robert Buckland course, just before um, he spoke the, to you, Charlie. I said, when do you think things be, will come to a head? Uh, he he looked up to the skies, did an eye roll, and then said, well, Boris hopefully Johnson, in the next hour it should all happen now. But it certainly seems as if the information that we're getting at the moment, Mr Johnson's resignation is imminent. And as I say, perhaps shock but not surprise the number. Numbers, I suppose it turned you know, out to be a numbers game, really, uh, with so many uh, members of the government, government. Well, the crucial leaving in that situation is where is the government is. then Whether hamstrung? Are we in a situation where the government is no longer effective, no to longer their function? Based on, uh, is it damaging brand UK around the world? As I say, so we are surrounded by international broadcasters here this morning who will be sending this message, depicting this chaos, what's happening where you are in Downing Street, just up the road, indeed, in the comments behind me. Sending that message around the world, it's not a good one, it's unedifying, of course, and it seems as if the Prime Minister has finally uh, made the decision that it's time for him to go. someone like Steve Baker or someone like Jeremy Hunt or someone like Tom Trigenhout. John, thank Rishi you very Sunak much. Uh, we're live here at Downing, Downing Street. Has Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, is inside, inside Downing Street this morning. Do. Well, and the BBC now understands and that the Prime yes, Minister is to resign. We understand he is writing his letter of resignation. Now, we don't know how in practice this will play out, whether he'll be bringing a podium outside number 10 here at some point in the next few hours, but it has been um, confirmed by the BBC the that, that Boris they could, they could, they'd have to is massively to resign. It follows the, during the course the, the of this morning they an could extraordinary get behind of events. You'll be aware of the number take it of resignations. The call, and then um, there were, this morning in the last half like hour, May, 40 minutes, to come back a number of very over, specific and very significant <laughs> interventions. It's possible we start with Nadeem Zahar, who of course is the newly appointed Chancellor I think the broader question he tweeted that it's going to be it was time hours, for Boris exactly Johnson to resign. He that, himself, the Chancellor, did time. not resign. And, of course, and the, then the we had Michelle Donnellan, um, another of the new Boris appointments. Boris Johnson has made a, a very big player of his own personal Yesterday, who is, who uh, is the new him, Education that, Secretary, that, who has that, herself him, resigned. Uh, inevitably, there and be a general and election these series of events, these resignations, were seen very much as have the end public, of the game. What we've heard exactly. from the Prime now, Minister under the British previously Constitution, was that, that he was the determined case, to fight on to the very end, but it is to the very end no matter what the circumstances were. were. And we knew that had yeah, it gone totally into right. the next week, the Conservative Party this would have happened. taken measures I think for it's another unlikely, vote of confidence. Things stand, All that would now appear academic. What we know now is that the Prime Minister will be resigning in terms of timetable. A, a there is no strategy for at this stage a, a, another general election. So I think an but election is probably here a few months away. Probably. And that is partly that because take. the economic uh, We would expect is, some is form of letter initially in the and then presumably a moment, in, a moment in time in which Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, will announce his resignation. You will be well aware that exactly. it's been a period of days now with a number of voices from senior members of his own government. Have in terms of where we are right now, and louder. John McGuire uh, what, what is just is down the road at College Green, Green here. John, I mean, a, a big yeah, Charlie, we spoke yes, to Robert absolutely. Buckland, former Lord Chancellor, earlier on in the programme. I was just talking about the fact that, that we had said off air before 
before the interview, how long is this going to take? You rolled your eyes skyward and said, hopefully within the hour. Sitting you weren't far off. This morning. Well, it's done now, and I think the Prime Minister's done delighted. the right thing, Number 10 the honourable thing, just and decided to tender his, his, his resignation. It was inevitable in these sad up. circumstances, um, but what we've got to make sure is that what he was elected some people to do, the One Nation programme the, uh, of government, to bring the, the, the country the, together, the to level up in his the, famous the, words, his continues. And uh, the government is a big organisation. It involves many, many members of parliament and civil servants. We need to get on with that work, and we need a leader who embodies those One Nation principles, somebody with experience of government, somebody who knows the challenges, who knows how to deal with government, but who also respects the what do you think would have made his mind up? What would have been the straw that broke the camel's back, as we've been saying? I think inevitably it's going to be the views of colleagues, and in particular members of cabinet and ministers who have voted with their feet this morning with some very strong letters of resignation. I don't think anybody. I mean, everything's moving incredibly quickly at the moment. We've had confirmed from several people in Downing Street that Boris Johnson is set to resign as Conservative Party leader and the Prime Minister. We also understand he is going to stay on until October the Conservative Party achieve, conference to allow a leadership to contest the to take Brexit, place. There is a practical the question about whether COVID the Conservative Party will allow that to happen, because don't forget, we've seen years. this slew okay, of resignations that's happened over the past 24 hours. There's some positions that need to be filled within the Cabinet and within the government just to keep the country running. So we'll have to wait for the 1922 treaty, we will no doubt be meeting to decide a timetable, but Thank really, after the much, past 48 uh, hours, uh, Charlie, the whole situation has been totally latest, unsustainable we'll for Boris Johnson. That thing, green, after a morning of trying to figure out his way through, they've realised what everyone else has realised, that it's over. John, thank you very much. Just one line for you. Keir yeah, Starmer uh, um, has commented already, uh, who has said, it's good news for the country that Boris Johnson is no longer Prime Minister. It should have happened long ago. Nicodia has been with me alongside me this morning, throughout the morning. Just talk us through what happens next in terms of logistics. What can we expect? Just briefly, there will be relief at some point today. I think the most many Conservative MPs and the Cabinet as well. And this morning we saw the new Chancellor, Nadine Zaharwi, who's been in the top 48 hours, and wrote an open letter saying the Prime Minister should go. Ben Wallace, the Defender, is the most ardent defender of Boris Johnson since he became Prime Minister. He also said that he should go as well. So it was clearly just unsustainable, and I'm sure within the party and within the Cabinet, yes, there will be an awful lot of belief that he has realised what has been painfully obvious to everyone that it's over. MPs who this okay. morning will we will leave it there. Just stay with us for one beds. moment because that we're uh, going to be joining will kick off viewers across this afternoon. the country it's in a moment. All so that's in here from the weeks. FT there. Uh, Nick, we are, of course, live uh, in that's all Downing for Street at the this moment. Morning. This is Geetha Goramuthi live in Downing Street for BBC News, BBC World and BBC One viewers who are just joining us. Chris Mason, the BBC political editor, has confirmed that Boris Johnson is going to step down. We expect a statement from the Prime Minister today. Uh, he will serve as Prime Minister until a successor is elected in the autumn, if the Conservative Party members, of course, and the MPs allow him to stay on until the autumn. Of course, there needs to be now a Conservative Party election for the new leader. It's expected there will be a very big field. We saw a letter from Nadim Zahawi published on Twitter today calling for the Prime Minister to step down. Boris Johnson has seen the scale of opposition against him and he has now agreed to resign. Well, of course, it had been incredibly febrile in the last 24 hours and it was clear that this was only moving in one direction. That came after a very senior Foreign Office uh, official contradicted the Prime Minister saying effectively he had been dishonest about a very serious sexual assault allegation against a member of the uh, Prime Minister's government. That whole scandal was just the latest uh, in a stream of scandals that has dogged the Prime Minister after Partygate, criticism about his own sense of honesty and integrity, the heart of the criticism about his character, something that 
his, even his allies accepted couldn't be fixed by new policy announcements, arguments over tax, arguments about how to address the very urgent questions on the cost of living that are only set to escalate in the next few months, and the real sense of policy drift with the uh, Conservative government as Boris Johnson has been buffeted over and over again by crises seem to be of his own making. Well, of course, we have had a stream of resignations, over 50, 54, 55 resignations or more. And of course, uh, we've also had the interventions today from Nadim Zahawi, who has uh, described himself as a friend of 30 years, saying that uh, he privately counselled the Prime Minister to step down yesterday, but today has gone public with that call and uh, Michelle Donnellan, the education uh, minister, newly appointed only yesterday, again resigning. It looks chaotic. Critics of the Conservative Party in the opposition